it's a great example of the kind of thing that could happen here. You know, you get a, a group of students, you know, working on an idea and form and actually right out of college, form a form of entity that makes games. You know, that's a powerful, powerful thing. Um, I'm wondering if there are any questions from the audience. Hi, um, I'm Jonathan Bowles. I run the Center for an Urban Future. Uh, a few years ago, we published a study called Getting in the Game, which is really about the economic potential of the gaming industry in New York. And um, among other things we talked about, uh, I heard people say in that, as we were doing the research, that New York might become maybe like, just like film is kind of the independent film capital, maybe because New York is doing casual games and serious games, that it could become kind of the independent gaming capital of New York. I just wanted to hear your thoughts about that. Yes, yeah, I, I love that. I, 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 I love that approach. And I think that it's true that we are uh, that we can use our position kind of like outside of the, the, the main orbits uh, that already exist of the mainstream game industry to our advantage. Uh, that in the same way that during the 70s, uh, NYU contributed to to the film industry, right. um, you know, in, in, in an important way by kind of like rethinking and. Uh, having this outsider approach uh, to the to, to Hollywood, um, that uh, that New York City could have a similar uh, kind of uh, uh, friendly outsider you know relationship with the mainstream game industry that could contribute uh, a fresh vision, a new approach, more experimental, uh, more sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, also we're at a particularly interesting time in technology because the barrier of entry into video games is hugely expensive. You only had uh, limited out outputs or resources, which is uh, you know uh, computer-based games mm -hmm. or you know the, the big three consoles, um, and the barrier of entry into those businesses was really high. I mean, this development kids were ten thousand dollars a piece, which means that no student's going to go out and get them for their allowance. Right? So, um, it, it, but right now with the the, the coming of, of mobile games, uh, flash-based games, um, you know the, the the way that the iOS has simple it is to get into it, how cheap it is to become a developer to explore some of these ideas, successful or not, uh, you know, really makes it viable for smaller groups of people to get back to almost, you know, 25 years ago garage style game design and game creating. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I always tell students you can only design what you know, right? And so getting some of that pre-experience in a safe place and then going out and applying it is... Yeah, I was going to say we actually did have a team of students in the mobile app development class last year build an iPhone game to get it on the app store, which was really exciting just in a semester. So I think that is so true about the barrier for entry. And it makes it, it, it's great when it's not just a grade, but it's actually, hmm, how many downloads do I have as, as a measure? <laughs> license a game as engine, you have to uh, customize it uh, to the particular game that you're making, uh, which takes time as well. And time equals money because it's a people burn rate as far as what their salaries are. And when you look at, at company investments, and, and you know, from, from a very simplistic point of view, what you're actually investing in is the people because the machines are immediately out of date. The building can be moved. <laughs> they're, you know, the only thing that's actually contained there is ideas and so, um, the, the, yes, engines are costly, and building the platform that, you build, that, that you're going to make a game on for a console is costly, but the, the real cost is actually the time invested and the amount of people it takes to, to, to build a uh, sophisticated, complex engine these days. I mean, there are companies that uh, 
make their bread and butter money basically on licensing their engines, and they have you know hundreds of people working on them at any time, uh, including the information feedback loops between the, their licensees and licensors. So. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the dreams of technology people is helping to 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 proceduralize some of what's happening in these in these big AAA titles, and not that we can ever replace the artist, but that's definitely an interesting technical challenge that, that we throw a lot of students at. Uh, yeah, as a, as a guy who plays in a little bit different space than you do, but the entrepreneurial space, um, curious what your sense is as gaming begins to evolve into the social networking infrastructure and you begin to lose the kind of the abstract nature of games and they become a part of your actual existence, example being Foursquare, uh, a game that retailers are beginning to play in. What's your sense about that direction of movement uh, and, and where might the ultimate Facebook game show up? Um, well, I mean, I think the games, uh, I mean, the interesting thing about what's happening now is that um, the, uh, you know, before there were computer and video games, uh, games were primarily a form of social interaction, or a stylized form of social interaction. You think about chess or tennis um, or golf. Um, it's things we pretty much do with other people. It's a way of, of interacting with other people. Um, and uh, that's, that's kind of like the art form of game is really carved out of, of those, uh, those interactions with other people. And then video games uh, kind of came along and it became more about the relationship between you and the system, you and the machine, uh, and you know, kind of exploring this, this, uh, this created uh, system of rules, uh, but almost in a, in a kind of a solitaire, a solitaire fashion. Um, and now, uh, we're seeing a shift back towards uh, the importance of other people um, as as a as an as an element of uh, you know as, as a core element of, of the game experience that uh, uh, which I think is in, in many ways just a just a cycle right I mean I think that these things are, are both important I think interacting with with the with constructed content and, and with the, the abstract systems is is one of the, the pleasures of, of a game uh, but interacting with your sister and your friends and your parents is another aspect of, of a game. Uh, and uh, and then, you know, I think in terms of games' relationship to the real world, I think there will always be a fascinating and unresolved uh, relationship, just as there is in in any, you know, form of culture uh, that, you know, games uh, carve off a little space that is special and outside of, of normal life, but it also exists within normal life and it has a relationship to normal life. So the, the, the overlap and, and the, and the uh, contrast there is part of the, the, the fun. Mm -hmm. so, so I think we have to maybe take one last question and then close the panel because we've got to move along. Uh, yeah. Good morning, my name is Land Grant, really. I'm the, uh, <laughs> the uh, founder and uh, the chief farmer of Growth Roots, and we sit with the Bruce Nice Wonders crew at 160 Varick Street, and we're focused on uh, the gamification of micro-retailers down at the, the grassroots, if you will, here in Brooklyn. So I want to follow on his question and ask if you folks are thinking about, since retail is one in five jobs across the country and even more than here in Brooklyn, are you thinking about how to support that with gaming or gamification? I don't know if these folks are, but you're welcome to come talk to me and we can figure out a, some kind of a partnership for how to think about that. It's a deal. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I want to thank our panelists. Celebrity special guest here, uh, Ed Reinfurt, who's the executive director of New York State Foundation for Science, Tech, and Innovation, otherwise known as NYSTAR. A lot of people might know what NYSTAR is. He's going to come up and just say a couple of remarks before we go over to the ribbon cutting. So, thank you again.